So in this video, we are going to play around with fog shader in Godot. First, I'm going to explain some basic stuff about fog shader. And then at last, I'm going to create this kind of uh, sandstorm thing with the fog shader. So what is fog shader? If you work with other type of shader, you know we have texture coordinate space. Basically, we can grab each pixel in this space with its corresponding UV coordinate, which has two components, X and Y. And all of our pixels are in two-dimensional grid. But that is different for fog shader. Here, instead of two-dimension grid, we have three-dimension grid. In another word, we work with volume here. This time, instead of UV, which has two components, X and Y, we have UVW, which has three components, X, Y, and Z. Like we have pixel in texture space. Here you can imagine each pixel like a cube cell in 3D space. You can even change the number of these cells in volume at the cost of the performance. If you go to the project setting, Render, in environment section, you can find volumetric box setting. Here volume size is somehow the resolution of my grid in 3D space. Default value is 64, but I changed that to 256 to get better result. Let's change that to 64 and see what will happen. As you can see, the quality of my box shader has changed a lot. For this tutorial, I suggest to put this to a high number if you can. This way you can see better what's happening when you write fog shader code. Also, it is possible to let the player change this in game graphics setting based on how much their machine has processing power. So to get started with volumetric fog shader, first you should activate that. And to do that, create an environment node and inside that, in a volumetric fog section, enable fog. This will add fog to your entire scene. But what I want is to set the fog only in some part of my scene and control that with shader. So I set this density to zero and then in the scene tree, I add a fog volume node. So this will create a small fog volume box in the scene and we can change the size of this box. So I make that bigger. Well, if you go to the material section, we can create a fog material or a fog shader material. Fog material will give you some basic control over your fog. But here we want to create our own shader, so I create a fog shader. So this is my empty fog shader. And as you can see, the shader type is defined to fog. And we write everything inside fog function. Here also we don't have fragment or vertex function. So there are a bunch of outputs which we can change to modify the behavior of our fog. First one is density. And now if I set my density to 1, the density of all cell inside this volume will change to 1. Density can also be a negative number. For example here, I create a two fog volume. And as you can see, the density of one of them is negative. So what it does, it is going to reduce the density at region around that. Well, next output is albedo, which is a vector tree and will change the color of the fog. And now if I change my color to one, as you can see, my fog changed from black to white. There is another output, which is called emission, which is going to behave like a light source. And we are not going to discuss about that. We have also some inputs, which we should do some calculation on those inputs and set our output. So the first input is STF or signed distance field. Imagine this is our fog volume in space. If you choose a point outside of my volume, what would be the distance to the closest point on the surface of our volume? So this is it in this case. And STF will give us that number. Another important thing is all points outside of my volume have positive STF value. All points inside of my volume have negative STF value. An STF value for all points on surface of my volume is zero. One of the most important application of STF here is to define a fall of value from edge of my volume. By default, our shader has defined this fall off for us. 
Look at the edge of this volume. But in case you want to calculate this fall off by yourself, you can do it. So here I just define SDF. Then go to the shader will not calculate the fall off for us anymore. And look what happened. So let's define a very simple fall off function. First I negate SDF. So inside of my volume has positive value and outside of my volume has negative value. Then I use a step function to set my fall off. For the first argument, I set that to zero. And for the second argument, I set it to SDF. This will set all value above zero to one and all value below zero to zero. So now to have more control over fall off value, I define a float uniform and I call it fall off. Then instead of zero, I put my fall off variable here. So now in editor, if I change this variable, I can control my fall off value. But in most of the cases, you want to write a good fall off function, which is going to slowly change from no fog to fog. Because in real world, we don't have fog like this, which has a clear edge. Right now, STF value can be any number. In many cases, you want to bring this STF value between range of 0 and 1, because it would be much easier to work with this value. The way you do this is by dividing the STF to the smallest edge length of our volume box. Because the maximum distance to surface for each point inside the volume is not bigger than the smallest edge length. If you are confused about that, just take a paper and draw a box on it. I'm sure you can understand that. Well, in this case, I don't need this. And for an example, I write a smooth step function to smoothly change the fall off value. But anyway, a smooth step function is not the best solution here. There are also better ways. Now let's see what other input we have. We have object position, which is the position of my volume in the board space. And this position is same for all of our cell in the volume. Here if I change the position of my volume, as you can see, the color will change for entire cells. Then we have word position, which is the position of each cell in word space. As you can see here, each point of my volume has a different color. And if I change the position of my volume, the color of each cell will change. Other input is U, V, W. This is similar to UV position in texture space, which the value of each component will change between 0 and 1. For example, this is how Y component of UVW change. As you can see, for bottom of my volume, the value is 0, and for the top part of my volume, it is 1. Similarly, this is X component, and this is Z component. Now let's create a sphere fog. Here I resize my fog volume to be a box. And then I define a uniform, which is called radius. I use this later to change the radius of my sphere. Then I define a float value, which is called L, which is the distance of each cell to the center of my volume. And I calculate that distance this way. I hope you understand that. Then I use a step function to set my density. And one important thing is, in this case, we should multiply the ball of value to density. Otherwise, it will not work. So this step function will give the value 0 for everything smaller than radius and 1 for everything bigger than radius. If you change the radius, you can see this. So we should only reverse that and we have our fog sphere. Now let's go to create the sandstorm fog which we talk about. Well here is my empty shader. I set my albedo to 1 for now and I create a simple fall off function. Then I define a sampler to the uniform for a noise texture. You can use also a 3D noise texture for fog shader because fog has volume. But I prefer to work with 2D texture because they are more light. Well, I set a noise texture to my sampler 2D. And then I define another uniform for my noise scale, which by default is 1. Then I read from my sampler 2D noise texture. 
So this is the tricky part. Here, instead of using UVW, I use word position for my texture coordinate. The reason behind that is because if I use word position, I can change the size of bug volume and everything will work. But if I use UVW, if I change the size of my volume, this will stretch my noise texture. My word position has three components. But here as we have a 2D texture, we can grab the noise texture by two value. Here I choose X and Z component of my word position. So my noise texture will appear in X, Z plane and it will stretch along Y axis. I will show you what I mean in a moment. And I multiply this with noise scale. So now if I use noise value as density, let's see what will happen. Well, something happened, but it is not what I expected. So I changed my noise scale to get what I want. Well, that is good. Because we work with fog volume, when you write a shader code, sometimes it is difficult to visualize what you are doing. And because of that, I suggested to you put the fog volume number in project setting to a high number to be able to visualize what you are doing. From above, everything is okay. But if you look at the fog volume from side, you can see that our fog is stretched in a strange manner. That is because we used a 2D noise texture and we sample our noise texture in X and Z plane. For example, if we sample our noise texture in Z and Y plane, you could see the noise pattern will appear from this angle. Now, if I scale my fog volume, as you can see, my texture is stretched also from above. And that is because we should enable repeat in our uniform noise texture. Also make sure your noise texture is seamless. Well, now if I change my fog volume, as you can see, it will change perfectly. Now let's move our fog. Here I define a vector 2, which I call that move UV, which is a vector 2 multiplied by time. You can define a uniform for direction and a speed and multiply them together here. But I just do this this way. Now if I add this to my move UV here, this will change my texture coordinate by time. And my noise will move and my fog move with that. Okay, how we can make this better? If you look at some fog or a smoke picture, you can see at the bottom of them, their density is almost 1. But as we go up, their density will change in a random manner and gradually they are going to fade out. So what we can do here is to set the bottom density of our fog to 1 and as we go up the value of the fog density will be our noise value. And we are going to do that with mix function. So the value of y component of uvw at bottom of my fog is 0. So this mix function will give us the value 1. And the value of UVW at top of my fog is 1. So this will give us the value of my noise. And between 0 and 1, it is going to interpolate between these two values. So to control the flatness of my fog, I created another float uniform, which is called flatness. And I multiply that to UVW.Y. Now if I change that, I can change the flatness of my fog. I just define another float uniform to be able to control the final density. And I multiply that to my final density and we can control the final density now. Up to this point, we have a good result. But as you can see, my fog is moving together and it seems they are stick together. So how we can make this even better? To show you better what happened here, I created another shader with my noise on it. Because in fog, it is difficult to see what is happening. So this is my fog from top view. And as you can see, everything is moving together. For now, let's remove move UV and stop this from moving. Well, now I'm going to define another float variable and I call this detail noise. And I'm going to read from noise texture and put this value inside detail noise. Now let's add this value to texture coordinate of my primary noise. So what happened here is at each point we are going to move our texture coordinate and read from another point. This will cause some distortion on my texture. 
If you look at my video about distortion shader, I did the same thing. I will put the link of that video in the description. So we move this texture at each point too much. So to correct this, I multiply my detail noise to 0.2 and that will make it better. And now if I move my texture again, as you can see, it does not look like a noise which all move together. But still I can see some repetition in my texture. So let's move our detail texture too. Well this time everything moved together again. Now if I multiply 0.5 to my move UV in my detail noise, it is going to move at half a speed. And we have a better effect. Well now let's apply this to our fog shader. First I add detail noise. Well, now we should add this to move UV. And nothing works. This is because detail UV is too big. Just multiply that with a small number and everything will work. I just increased my final density a little bit. Okay, that is good. You can make this even better, but I'm going to stop here and set the color value of my fog shader to make this more realistic. Well, let's look at some reference images before setting our color value. Here we have a smoke image and as you can see, where the smoke is more dense, it is more white. Also if you look at other images like this sandstorm, you can see the opposite thing. Where it is more dense, it is darker. So what I can say here, the color of these gases has some relation with the density of the gas. So what we can do is to define a gradient texture and sample from this gradient texture based on our density where I define a sampler 2D for my gradient texture for now I create a gradient texture for that but later I'm going to change that here I created a vector tree and I'm going to read from my gradient texture for texture coordinate I set the x value to my density and y value doesn't matter too much because our gradient texture is one dimensional texture I set it to 0.5. Well, now if I set my color to albedo, as you can see, the color of my fog is changed. And if you notice, I did this wrong. Look at my density. It is 2.4. So the value of my density could be more than one, and this will cause problem when I read from my gradient texture. The correct way is to map this to a value between 0 and 1. But you can make this correct, and I leave this to you. Now just by changing this gradient texture, you can create different type of gases. Let me see if I can find what I want. Well, this worked for me right now, but you can play around with this gradient texture and find a value which is good for what you want to make. And this was about fog shader in Godot. Hope you liked this video. If you have any question or suggestion, let me know. Until the next video, bye.